So it's an honour for me to be here with you here at this uh, fabulous Hooban Centre in Ardoin. I'm very aware of the pain and the suffering and a legacy of mistrust that has defined community relations, not just in this area, but uh, further afield. And in recognising that experience across many years, it is important to acknowledge and to celebrate the huge efforts, efforts to build peace and to deliver for communities. And so many of you here today are testimony to that. I, I want to pay particular tribute to those who had the vision and the courage to transform this wonderful site here at the Holy Cross Monastery into what is now a wonderful shared community facility that is enjoyed and valued by everybody. And I also want to say that we chose this venue very deliberately to launch our policy statement. This isn't an accident that we're gathered at this point. We chose this venue as a place of hope and of leadership. With others, the people here played a role in supporting a resolution of what seemed an intractable situation. And we've just heard from the Our City, Our City project, and this is tangible evidence of how a younger generation are actively rejecting sectarianism and providing hope and example. And this certainly will not be the first case in which the young or the younger uh, are ahead of the older sections of society and leading the way. I'm here because of, uh, as leader of Sinn Féin, I want to say that we will reject, we will name, and we will challenge sectarianism in all of its forms, throughout our society, and in the institutions of governance and public policy. I want to acknowledge the work of local communities, civic organisations, trade unions, cultural bodies, educational institutions, business, housing association, sports club, the GAA and uh, others, and faith communities for your commitment to challenging this scourge. Our policy statement is our contribution to a much wider societal debate on ending sectarianism. And it's about very much supporting all of your efforts. I want to say that this process is not owned by Sinn Féin, but we do bring our own analysis to the problem. We need to acknowledge that sectarianism was used in this state and, let it be said, in the southern state to drive division and to protect political <coughs> interests. I'm very thankful that those days are gone, but I also know that if we are to build a future that is prosperous, that is confident, that is generous and reconciled, well then we need to deal with the cancer and the remnants of sectarianism that stands as a blockage <coughs> to our progress. And for it to deliver the change we seek, this debate and process has to be owned by each and every one of us that calls this place home. And that's why it's particularly significant that Ian joins us uh, today and has spoken this morning, and I wish to thank him again for that. We have a vision for a better future, and that's about hope, it's about prosperity, it's about rights, it's about opportunity. It's a future that's not defined by the legacy and the reality of sectarianism. Because 20 years on from Good Friday, it is now a time for fresh thinking and for bold ideas to be taken forward. The anniversary provided us uh, an opportunity not just to reflect, but I think much more importantly, to look ahead, to imagine and to envision what our future together looks like, what, what, what it can be and importantly, the things that we still need to do. So it's time that we stand up together and that we work to end sectarianism. We owe that to each other and we certainly owe that to our young. Because when something is broken, you roll up your sleeves and you fix it. And we need to help communities break free from the type of sectarianism that treats people differently, that sees people as a threat that sees people 
as less than oneself. So I believe that sectarianism is akin to hate crime. We name them out. We name racism. We name sexism. We name homophobia. So it's not acceptable to excuse sectarian conduct, to give alibis for it. We need to name it and we need to adopt uh, an approach of zero tolerance. Because sectarian attitudes and behaviours are about denying rights and respect to others. They're about diminishing and excluding. And we believe in inclusion and reaching out. I want to say that I accept as the leader of Sinn Féin that I and we have a particular responsibility to listen to all voices, to engage and to reach out to everyone, including those, and perhaps most importantly, to those that we politically disagree with. But there can be no disagreement about the need to confront, to expose and eradicate sectarianism in all its manifestations. And this ought to be common ground on which we can all work together. We need to tackle a mindset that for far too long has created societal fault lines and which has pervaded all aspects of our civic life. And it is the responsibility of this generation of politicians to bring this to an end. And to reiterate what Declan has said, it's as simple as this. You cannot hold or express sectarian attitudes and profess to be an Irish Republican. It's as simple as that. The two are mutually incompatible. Republicans are called upon to demonstrate respect, to uphold the rights of all of our people, irrespective of their religious persuasion or none, irrespective of their cultural identity, their political affiliation, their ethnic origin, their sexual orientation. And I believe that this is a prize worth fighting for, worth standing together for, a society free from sectarianism. And that's why we've detailed our thinking in a manner that is strategic and in a manner that's designed to provoke debate and to influence change. We walk in the same lineage as the United Irishmen and women who gathered not too far from here on Cave Hill. We remain ideologically committed above all to the unity of Catholic, Protestant and dissenter. We are avowedly anti-sectarian and that means, as I have said, a zero tolerance approach. So what do we mean by this in practical terms? Well we mean that we have a right to uphold the rights of all to employment free from sectarian discrimination intimidation or attack, <coughs> to housing, to live in your home where you wish free from fear, to free association, recreation and to socialise with people that you choose in the location of your choice, to practise your faith and to worship free from any interference. We're committed to challenging sectarian speech acts of intimidation or other discrimination wherever we witness it or hear it. And we recognise that it is the responsibility of government and statutory agencies to uphold and defend all of these rights. And that's why we see our anti-sectarian approach as zero tolerance. And at the heart of our politi political institutions here in the North and beyond, we need to make change. So we seek the incorporation of a citizen's anti-sectarian charter into the pledges of ministers, MLAs, TDs, local councillors, Shanadori. We seek the full implementation of the Together Building a United Community Strategy in the North. We call for a clear legal definition of sectarianism as a hate crime within legislation and with appropriate legally enforceable sanctions. Maybe most importantly, we encourage all party unity and leadership for a popular campaign against sectarianism and segregation north and south. 
And we also call for the establishment of a civic forum in the North as a platform to encourage cross-community and anti-sectarian solidarity within civic society. So if we're serious about ending sectarianism, the days of political leaders remaining silent or of statutory bodies making excuses must end. Now is the time to take a stand. So those in positions of political leadership who choose to duck and dive or who stand on the sideline when it comes to exposing sectarianism and healing sectarianism, well, those political figures need to be challenged. They need to be exposed. And collectively, we need to invite them onto our ground, the modernizing, forward-looking political ground. We want to hear what you think about our policy statement. We, we want you to use it, to critique it, and to let us know what, where you think the gaps are and how they might be enhanced. In other words, we're not claiming that this document is the be-all and end-all, the last word on this subject. It's far from it. Belief in the union with Britain is a core part of the tradition and identity of a substantial section of our people. And we respect that. I respect that. We are United Irelanders. And I want us to achieve a new Ireland. I want us to do that with respect, with graciousness and with generosity. We want a new Ireland in which everybody's rights are guaranteed. Each culture is respected and diversity, rather than feared, is embraced and valued. I'm committed to reaching out the hand of friendship, to finding common ground with all political leaders as we bid to end sectarianism. This is a conversation and a debate that I want to have with all shades of unionism, political and civic, with loyalism and with the Orange Order. Because the question we have to pose for ourselves is how do we collectively tackle sectarianism? So we're open to all engagements, every opportunity for dialogue with all sections of our community, and we are serious about tackling this. If I had my way, I would meet every single person individually. I'm not sure that that's a, a realizable goal, but I'm, I'm gonna give it, give it my best sh shot. Confronting sectarianism often means challenging the attitudes, behaviours and practices of your own people, of your own tribe, of your own constituency. And that can be hard, but it's the right thing to do. We don't dodge the right things because they're difficult. We roll up our sleeves and we take them on. So I have no time for excuses or political bystanders, I want to see action. And I will support everyone, every single person who makes this stand. We can't allow those who want to use the past to perpetuate sectarianism, to maintain division and inequality. We must prevail. We must prevail and every section of society must make their voices heard. So my friends, we have a lot of work to do. The task of ending sectarianism and building a better future is now live. And this is a big societal challenge that we must face head on. And we all have a contribution to make. To all of you, in all of your different roles and, and walks of life coming from such a wide variety of perspectives and experiences. I want you to know that we will support you, that we will back you, that we will walk this journey with you. And perhaps most particularly to those that come from a tribe other than my own. To you in particular, we extend a hand of friendship, a hand of solidarity in the spirit of common cause because we can do this and we will prevail. And to anyone who doubts that, look to Pierce, look to Chelsea. 
They didn't make excuses. They didn't dodge their challenges. They looked to their challenges. They took on their fears. They faced them down and they triumphed. And I believe working together, so will we. I am determined that working together, so will we. So let's get to work. There's work to be done. Together, let's stand up against sectarianism and let's defeat it. Gurumila Mahagwiv Galer. Sinn Féin, Goananis, Carta Agus Eintas Naharan, Equality, Rights and Irish Unity.